Boom, boom. All right. Oh, uh, I don't know if this is live yet. Oh. All right, apparently I'm live. Uh, hello world, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, all of you viewers out there, looks like just one viewer. I uh, wonder who you are. Uh, basically, just going to pick up where I left off with the last snake episode. Uh, we have some sort of a quad on the screen. And, um, yeah, the goal now is to kind of take a lot of this code that I put inside the game view and move it out into some other files so that I can reuse a lot of this logic because we're going to need a couple of different kinds of render pipeline states. And right now, we only have this one generate render pipeline state, very basic. So what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, let's break this out a little bit. Who, uh, let, me, let me just get my desktop all set up right here. How the hell does this, apparently can't. Um, viewers will experience buffering. Okay, well, sorry viewers, you concurrent viewer. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to create another class right here or excuse me, another, not group. I'm gonna create a file. It's gonna be a Swift file. Swift file is gonna be my render pipeline state file. So render pipeline state. And inside of here, we're gonna have a class um, render pipeline state. And this will be basically a static class. I'm not gonna create a library or anything like that. It'll just be render pipeline states dot get basically. So I'm gonna create a function in here. It will be get, and then that will return a render pipeline state. Um, we're not gonna implement that yet. I need to import metal kit. All right, um, and we need some types. So enum render pipeline state types. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to generate different types of render pipeline states. So the first one that I have right now is just the basic render pipeline state, and that has the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So um, yeah, let's create an initialize function here. So this will be a public static func. This will be public static func initialize. Um, also, if you're watching, I don't know who you are, uh, or if you were watching yesterday. Hey, yeah, what's up, Peter? Okay, it is Peter. Um, this is available on my GitHub. That's in the description. Um, I'm hoping today will be a little more smooth. I haven't been drinking, <laughs> so I'm not intoxicated. Uh, so yeah, we have initialize, um, and then we need a dictionary. So private static var render pipeline states. I'm just going to call it library. Why not? I guess it is going to be a library. Uh, this will be a dictionary of enum, which is render pipeline state types and um, MTL render pipeline states. That will be equal to an empty dictionary. Inside of initialize, uh, we will want to store a couple of render pipeline states. So instead of doing like a really cool protocol render pipeline state thing, I'm just going to create a bunch of functions. So the first function I'm going to create is uh, private. Uh, actually, if I go over to my game view and just take over this generate function, this is what I want to put in there. So in render pipeline states, I'm just going to store away this generate render pipeline state. This will need to be a static function. And then from the initialize function, I can call generate render pipeline state, and I'm going to refactor this, rename it to generate basic render pipeline state. Um, doesn't want to do the rename. Let's see, rename? No? Okay, it's not that big a deal. Generate basic render pipeline state. And then we'll have one for the grid, because our grid's going to need a different pipeline state, because I'm going to need to send different variables through the different shaders. And then we're going to need one maybe for like the snake, some texturing. Yeah. So initialize, we're, we're going to call that from our game view. So right after self.delegate equals self, we'll just go um, render pipeline states 
dot initialize and that will call into render pipeline states it will generate the basic render pipeline state and um, right here we're setting this so what I want to do is I want to go var render pipeline state mtl render pipeline state and then I'm just going to return Uh, the render pipeline state that we create. Cool. Uh, that looks pretty good. Now inside here, we're calling generate. Maybe we should just store into this library this render pipeline state. So instead of creating it right here or saying return, let's just go uh, library dot update value. We'll do render pipeline state types dot basic. Oh. Yes, this is the key, so we're gonna call this the key. This will be the render pipeline state. Cool. Pretty sweet stuff. So now our library is getting updated with that render pipeline state, and we can call get, which will return the library. Actually, you know what? This, yeah, we'll do it, that's fine. Uh, the library at render pipeline state type. MTL, nope, render pipeline state types. And then we'll just turn, I'm gonna call this type, it's a really long name. Right there, boom. Yeah. Voila! Now we have this get function we can call from anywhere. It's gonna be complaining over in game view because we're setting the render pipeline state. This doesn't exist anymore. It's actually render pipeline states dot get dot basic all right let's find out where it's complaining see if anyone's chit chatting peter you're the only one in here oh i guess there's someone else now some other person all righty uh it's taking its sweet time to build failed let's find out where use of unresolved yep not calling that because i got rid of it now we can press play. No? Yeah, it'll, it should build now. Take a swig. Oh, oh, there it is. There's our beautiful quad. What the hell is that? That's not me. I don't know what, why is there a cursor on this thing? What the heck? What in the name of, there's a, I don't know if you can see this, but there's an extra cursor right here pointing at this equal sign. It's just gonna drive me a little nuts. It's probably OBS just freaking out. Uh, just ignore it. It's not actually my cursor. And if that, if that, if you can't see my other cursor kind of wiggling around right now, please let me know. Please let me know. Um, so now we have this render pipeline states initialized. Uh, what I also want to do is I want to create a scene. So our scene is going to contain all of the different objects that we want to create. So. Uh, Let's go to new file here. It'll be a Swift file. I'm gonna call it scene. And like I said, this is just following the patterns from my tutorial series. It's not really, um, it's not really like uh, my, using my engine, but it's it's not really following it directly. You know, we're not using the exact engine, but we're using the concepts from it. So scene will be a class scene. Uh, scene will eventually be a node, but for now we're just scene. Uh, we'll call init on our scene. And then we will have inside of our scene a mesh, our quad mesh. So we're gonna take quad mesh and shove it in our scene. So I'm gonna paste that there, and then I'm gonna go back to my game view and take this mesh.draw primitives right there. Go into the scene and um, we will have a func update and we will have a func render. Func. What the heck? Apparently there's autocomplete in Swift. Did not know that. Something kind of cool to note is uh, looking at the WWDC this year, um, phones or uh, Xcode's now going to be able to do metal on the simulator's phones, so you don't need a physical device for, um, 
you want to do like metal on a on a phone so i could probably put together a little tutorial series on how to make ios apps with metal um the problem was that i didn't want to do like recording software with my phone plugged into my computer because that's a hassle uh so yeah pretty cool we'll be able to use the simulator so we'll have update and we'll have render um update i could pass delta time here but i don't want to i just want to create a global class let's call it a new file swift it's just going to be game time and game time will contain our last frames times like frames per second so like one over 60 or 60 frames per second um and i actually have that already i'm going to push all this code up in just a second so don't freak out let's see did i do game time on here no can't see it i see game view okay well got to go into a different let's go to the uh engine that i have game engine this is the game engine from my youtube series let's go to core game time taking game time my neighbors are bumping some serious music right now you can hear it straight through the walls so now we have this game time object um, inside of our game view we need to update that so let's go uh, game time dot update time one divided by uh, float view dot preferred oh, doesn't want to auto complete frames per second nice so that's usually views uh, are the preferred frames per second is going to be 60 so this will be 1 60th of a second I'm just going to check the chat can't see extra cursor okay quad we got it hey master swift wow master of swift uh you know what i could do i think i can just throw oh let's do that that way i can see if you guys are chatting over there on the side because i'm just kind of sitting on my couch right now there's not really any uh like i don't have extra screens i have my tv in front of me i'm not going to connect that all right um yeah so we're updating that time we're actually going to do this render command encoder stuff inside of the scene as well right there and then we're going to go mesh dot draw primitives with the render command encoder and i'm gonna just take this commented out code let's just make this a little wider right there and uh yeah cool um now we need, need need to just add a scene here. So var scene, which will be a scene. I'll just, yeah, let's just do scene. Scene. This changes everything. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean? What do you mean by this changes everything? Everything? Oh crap, that's crazy. Everything? I'm gonna take those, put those inside of scene. We're gonna get some stuff done today too. I'm not just gonna dick around with struggling to make a quad, because that's some basic stuff. We wanna actually get some stuff done today. So I'm gonna take this mesh, put it over inside of our scene, upon in it, and let's instantiate our scene. So we're doing our render pipeline states. Now we can go scene equals scene. We don't need a scene manager or anything. Basically, it's just like our scene is just going to be our uh, our default, like a basic scene, and then we're going to create a like snake scene. This is just going to be the basic class. Anyway, uh, you'll see what I mean once we get there. So now that I have this scene right here, stop saying the word scene. I said it again. Oh, I've said it. Let's press play, and we should have the same. Oh my God, where's the quad? Because I'm not calling render or update on our scene. Oh, so out in game view with our draw call, let's go scene. First thing we want to do is dot update. And then scene dot render. I know those itches. Cody wants that. Ah, yeah, so I cleaned up that cat vomit yesterday. 
That was uh, absolutely horrible. My cat just tends to overeat. He's a big cat, and uh, he likes food. So, I can see the chat. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You can see the chat? I can see the chat. Can you not see the chat? Maybe YouTube like blocks the chat. It knows that it can hide it from OBS or some some stuff. All right, so if I press play now, we should have our quad on the screen. Rendering, oh yes. Uh, yeah, see, there's an extra, I'm circling right now, there's an extra cursor right there. <laughs> por qué, por qué, yo no sé. I don't know how to say why in German. Guess it doesn't matter. Okay, now we have a scene. We have the ability to set the render command encoder and have a mesh. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to create a node class. The node class is going to be responsible for maintaining the model view matrix, or excuse me, the model matrix, and it's going to do our rendering and updating for us. So I'm going to create a node right here. This will import metal kit. Oh, you know what? Let me, um, this will have an empty node class or an empty node file. But I'm gonna push this up to GitHub in case you wanna pull it down. And now you have some sort of a scene built up. I need to open up my GitHub desktop. Yeah, I don't have iTerm. Let's just use iTerm. I think it'll be a lot less heavy on. There we go. Let's go CD documents.project slash snake 3.0. Is that it? Yep. Now I can go get status. Let's see how much, oh, look at all that, git add dot git commit m. Uh, we'll say we added scene behavior, I don't know, git push. Uh, okay, maybe I'm not gonna, um, it's gonna ask me for my username and password and I'm afraid that it's gonna show you everything. I need to really set that up, I guess, and then set that up. All right, let's just push to origin. That doesn't need my password. Okay, out in the repository, this code exists now. All right, uh, for the node class, I'm gonna import metal kit, metal kit, class node. Once this, is all, once this node stuff is set up and we have rendering, like with the recursive rendering, uh, the scene graph rendering, uh, we could just add things to the scene really easily. So we'll be able to add our snake, add our grid, add our grid background add the lights, add everything really easily once we had this node class set up. So node will have the model matrix, which is, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna type everything, every little thing out. So let's just go take this. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm taking my old node class and we're just gonna talk about it. All right, so our node class has position, rotation, and scale. Everything that we add to our game will have a position in space, rotation around whatever axis and a scale uh, we're also going to need some math this is breaking because we need math uh, I'll import that in a second actually let's just do it so I'm going to create a new group it's going to be utils well we'll come back and talk about the node and then I have a really slick math class I've just kind of been copying across all of my projects that need math so in utils we have math.swift copy that put it in here and you get all of this as well so if I go to utils let's add a new file we'll call it math.swift so it'll be math boom so this has all of our different functions that we're gonna need for matrix operations and then out inside let's close that 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 we'll come back to that um, and here now we can rotate around the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, and then we can scale ourselves um, and set our position. That returns the model matrix. The model matrix responsibility, primary responsibility, if you did not know, is to make sure that, is to allow us the capability to move around, rotate, and scale objects in our three-dimensional scene. That's This kind of encapsulates all that logic into one matrix, which is pretty sweet. Um, we have an array of children. Um, this is just kind of following the tutorial that I put together. Uh, every node could have ch child nodes, 
and then it'll render its own child nodes and I'll show you in a second. When we initialize this, we initialize with an ID and that's just a UUID. Um, I don't know what that stands for, but it's basically just like a, str uh, a string of characters, random characters, because when I store into dictionaries this node, I will want to reference it by its ID. Or if I'm like doing some collision, I'll want to make sure that that ID doesn't match this ID. Um, we have the ability to add children. Um, it's just basically call self.children.append. We could call self.children.append, but yeah, whatever. Um, we have the do update and the after update. So these two functions are called by our update function. So do update is before update. This is like the update that happens and then we update all of our children. We also set the parent model matrix equal to this model matrix because the parents model matrix, if we multiply the child model matrices by the parent model matrices, we get all of its scale translate rotations as well. So we can like rotate, translate and scale as groups. And then we'll have this after update function that I'll call, what the hell, my cat's freaking out. Um, we have this after update that we can call just because we want to. And we don't need to take in this delta time anymore like I did in my other one. What do you want? I don't know if you can hear my cat. It's freaking out. Um, so yeah, this is called scene. This is like updating as a scene graph. And then we have our render function right here, which uh, we don't have like a do render. I'm gonna create a function called do render. That way we don't need to um, call super.render whenever we want to render as a subclass. So I will just go like that and then we'll update this if we overwrite it. You just don't need the delta time because we have game time. Um, down here we have our set rotations and then this this extension down here just updates the this is just like getters and setters for movement, rotation, and scaling and cool. Cool, right? Oh man, look at that node class. I'm gonna push that up in case you guys wanna look at it. Pushing it. And math. Let's commit it to master, pushing it up. If you have questions on how to pull down, oh, let's see. Okay, yep. How's the resolution resolution look? It's a lot better. I'm, I tried to make it, I tried to go in and update the, uh, the settings so that the quality is a little bit better. Let me know. I know that you guys are somewhat behind this actual video. All right, uh, as you can see, I'm at 88% because this crappy battery keeps dying. Anyway, we have a node class. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna create a new file and I'm gonna create a game objects class. And I'm not gonna do anything with that yet but I'm gonna create it. Um, Cause our scene technically can override node. So we'll have a node here and then right here we'll go super dot in it. And yeah, we won't actually need to call render and render command encoder in just a little bit. Um, this will instead be func do update and func do render. And then in do render, we can throw this code. Because if we just use the update and the render, we'd have to do whatever logic right here. So do logic. And then we'd have to call super.render or update. And I just don't want to do that. That's what the do render and the do update function are for. Um. Yep, we need to override them. So these need to say override, override, override. Huh. And that should be all good. Now we have this node class. Our scene now has a model matrix, which is pretty sweet. Um, and we have a mesh. Let's press play just to make sure our quad's showing up. Nope. Let's make sure this is getting called. Nope. Oh, you know what? It isn't getting called. You know why? I know why it's not getting called. Because I added the function, but I didn't. So back in Node, 
what I need to do is before we call render on our children, we need to just do do render with render command encoder. Ha! Huh. There we go. Now we should have a nifty quad. Don't you throw up on stuff up there. Let's see here. Yep, there we go. All right, we have a quad and we have a node. Now let's go make our quick game object. So import middle kit class game object. This will be a game object of node. It will be a node. We're going to have our render function. Well, let's, uh, all right. Game objects, they will have a specific render pipeline state. So I need to create render pipeline state. We'll go type here, render pipeline state types. And we're just gonna make it a getter. That way we can, um, oh, uh, we're gonna default it to basic. But this is just a get function. So this is a get, which means we can override it if we make another game object. So if I, Let's just, for example, create a new file real quick. We're going to need it anyway. Call grid. And we'll go class grid, which overrides our game object. Inside here now, we can say var render pipeline state. And we can return, like, whatever we want. And we don't have another type of render pipeline state, but now this grid game object can use if we had a grid render pipeline state. So that's kind of cool. Let's put that up under node, under game object. Uh, let's put this up here. All right, so now with game object, we will need uh, var model constants. Model constants will be equal to model constants. Class game object. Nope, that's not what I wanted. So I thought a little bit about the C++ implementation. That's actually a really, really cool idea. So that basically, um, you know, the view gets generated, but we use that bridging header to just write, you know, the game logic in C++. I think that's brilliant. And uh, like, I didn't understand what you were talking about, but now, now, I, now I do, Peter. Peter, I understand. I don't even know if you're out there, Peter. You might be out there. Peter. Um, I watched, uh, what, what did I watch? I watched Homeward Bound the other day, and one of the, the protagonists is Pre Peter. Peter's the young boy who, is, he's the master of shadow, right? And so, <laughs> that's the only Peter reference I have in my brain right now. All right, um, so we call super.init, uh, model constants, we'll need to override our render. So, for render, we will say, um, render command encoder dot set. Okay, so this is where we set our render pipeline states. So let's go back to our scene. So whoop on all of this logic, except we're gonna keep the scene constants in there. So I'm gonna swoop on this logic right here. Go back into game object, store that. And now we can set the render pipeline state to our render pipeline state type at index two. And that should work now. Let's make sure everything's working. I will need to do super.update or super.render here. We only need to do this on um, on like classes that implement Node. We won't need to do them on any other classes like that do render stuff. Well, yeah, because say say we inherit from game object and we want to add some stuff to the render function, we're still going to need to go super dot do render. So only classes that inherit from Node, I'm going to do that with. Um, let's do it like that. We need our mesh in here, so it goes scene. Go back, add that. I know I'm moving stuff around, but I'm just trying to go through the uh, logic in which I'm adding stuff to the scene. There we go, and uh, this should work just fine. All right, so scene doesn't have a mesh. We need to instantiate that inside of our 
game object. See, I'm just kind of moving everything from the scene into the game object now. Mesh.draw primitives looks great. Um, we will need an update function. So update override super.update. Actually, you know what? We don't need update. It just occurred to me because we're updating. Yeah, we don't need to do update here. We just need render. Um, and inside scene, I'm going to create a function called build scene. Don't need to do this will be just render super dot render. Like I said, this is a node class. So render command encoder. We're going to need to set those bytes. I'm flying. I know there's a lot to do. So I'm going so fast. If you need me to slow down and explain anything, let me know. Uh, all two of you, you guys. <laughs> you support me. All right. Uh, build scene. Right there, we will need var scene constants here. The reason I decided to do this as a live stream was because, you know, in case somebody down the line wants to see how I go about making little games or doing investigatory work on how to make a game, uh, this is that's what this is for. I'm making this so that, you know, because there's magic behind tutorials, I think you don't think about how much studying the person doing the tutorial actually did. You only watch them do the tutorial, so you're like, they're brilliant. Um, and so what this is, is I'm just trying to make it a, you know, some something you can refer to as, like, this shit is hard, and I know that I can be able to do it because they are having a hard time doing it. Anyway, this, this stuff's hard, it's not easy. Um, that's what I'm trying to say, I guess. Uh, we're going to call build scene, and then this will be called from our, we're going to call build scene from our scene. So I'm going to create another file. This will be called the snake scene. Right there. Snake scene will inherit from scene. So import metal kit just because I want to. We don't have to. I don't think we're going to need it, but you never know. Snake scene, which will be a scene. And we will have the function build scene right here. And inside of the scene, we're going to have var game object equals game object. And uh, add child game object. Huh. Wow. Um, inside of our game view now, inside of our display, instead of calling it a scene, this needs to be the snake scene. Don't worry, all is well, it should work the same. Now we should be getting, uh, I guess we get, oh, yep. So this needs to be a, we can make this a scene and this is snake scene. Just press play, make sure it still works. Oh, moving along. All right. So everything's still working the same. We have a scene, we have our node, and we have a game object. This game object can be whatever the hell we want it to be. Cool. Um, mesh, huh? Yeah, for the most part, it's always gonna be a quad mesh for now. We can update that if we want in the future. Uh, and I'm gonna push this up. So now we have a snake scene. Get to master, push it. Also, so if I mess up, I can go back in time. There we go. Like I said, if you guys have questions, please let me know. I'm going to put this render pipeline states in graphics. Oops, put it in utils, didn't I? In graphics. Uh, should I? Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I have my metal types here. I'm going to put that inside graphics as well. And... Let's create another, so we have this game folder with just mesh in it. I'm gonna put node, scene, I'm gonna put all of these objects inside of game. And um, these two are basically like core. So I'm gonna create a new group and I'm gonna call it core. Oh, doesn't wanna create a new group, I guess. Uh, let's see, new group here, core. And you two can go in there. All right. Fantastic. 
what a cool little system going. Um, so like what I have right now, let me, let me push this. What I have right now is boilerplate for any game you would want to make with metal. This is really good little setup, uh, for if you want to expand on it and make, uh, at least for now a 2d game. Uh, there's not even really 2d aspect to it. There's no projection matrix, but, um, Oh, before I push it, I'm going to update my shaders to now do, uh, so we need the world position, which is the model constants dot model matrix. I com I commented this out yesterday because we we're having a hell of a time with uh, with trying to get our quad to work, but it works now. So this will be scene constants. Oh, I got rid of my scene constants dot uh, uh, projection matrix. And we're going to multiply that by scene constants dot view matrix times world position. We're going to set this equal there, this equal there. And I also need to take in constant uh, model constants. Nope, scene constants. And I'll, I'll, I'll recap on this in just a moment. Scene constants, scene constants at buffer one. And I'm going to copy this line right here, put it right chair. This will be model constants, model constants at buffer two. And get rid of that comma, build it. Everybody should be happy in here. All right, so uh, basically we're going to send in our scene constants and model constants into the GPU in buffer one and two. And then we're setting this rasterizer data on the output. So we have our world position, which is consists of model matrix and our position. And then we have our position that our, our final position, which is made up of our projection matrix times the view matrix. And then we have our texture coordinates, which we need to still set on our quad and then our world position dot X, Y, Z. Now that's another thing I need to do, uh, before I send up this final boilerplate, nice code is, um, inside of mesh. When I construct this vertex, I'm not actually doing any texture coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that. Texture coordinate uh, float two, and I'm just gonna go zero, zero for now. Now, depending on where the origin exists on our quad, in my case, what did I do over here? I probably wanna follow that same, same deal. I did the top uh, the bottom right is yeah so the top left is going to be our origin so let's make the top left of our texture so top left is zero zero top right is going to be zero or one zero bottom left is going to be uh zero one bottom right is going to be one one so here's the texture coordinates for our quad and we'll be able to test that in just a moment send some textures through or something um yeah, that looks great. Moving along. Uh, let's go back to our shaders, make sure I didn't leave anything commented out. We have our texture coordinates right here. Our color, probably change that in the future, but yeah. Okay, cool. So now just add game objects. You can set whatever mesh you want. You might, might be able to add that in the initializer, but this is really, really good boilerplate code. This is like boilerplate created. If you want to make a game, this is good code to be able to do so with. If you want to make something from scratch using metal, this is a good place to start. And it's not that many files. It took like an hour and 45 minutes yesterday, but that's just debugging. Um, yeah. Yep. This is a good place to start. Oh, because ah, now uh, let's say we want to scale our game object. So if we go to our scene, uh, excuse me, our snake scene. Let's go to game, make a new group and call it scenes because this is really annoying. Scenes, we're gonna put our scenes in there. Uh, in snake scene, what we can do is we can go game objects dot, huh, you know what, let's just rotate it. So let's go on or do update. We'll go game objects dot rotate on the Z axis uh, game time dot delta time. And we should see our, uh, game object rotating. See, so that's what I mean by now you can 
kind of just start making a game. Okay, yeah, it's uh, it's not working. <laughs> Why aren't you working? I do everything for you. Game object dot update. Let's go to node. For child and children render. I did. I set the update. Oh, model matrix. Oh. Yep. So in game object, I'm not actually setting the model constants. Uh, model matrix. So I need to do update here. Super dot update. I'm not updating the model constants inside of our vertex byte buffer. Um, so I need to go uh, model constants dot model matrix equals model matrix. Now we should see some rotation. See, you just gotta, you just know that you, you've done this so many times that you just know what might be going wrong. Am I updating this here? Am I doing this here? Look at that. Oh, that is some delicious BCAAs. BCAs. Cool. Now we have the ability to rotate. Um, this is more of the boilerplate. This is like continue, but nah, whatever. Uh, let's create our grid. Remember I created this file called grid. Um, we need to create a new render pipeline state though. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this function, generate basic render pipeline state. And we're gonna create the grid one. So we're finally gonna create at least a grid, grid render pipeline state. And I'll describe, it'll be a grid vertex shader. Grid for, actually, you know what? The vertex shader can be exactly the same. Yeah, because it's just a quad. And the quad has texture coordinates. We can keep the vertex shader the same. The fragment shader is definitely going to need, need to be different. And uh, all of this information can be the same. You see how this vertex descriptor could be taken? Yeah. Should I do it? Should I do it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm going to create private let um, vertex descriptor because I'm creating a vertex descriptor over and over and over again, MTL vertex descriptor. And I don't want to be doing that. So I'm going to go let vertex, actually, I'll just take this and then I'll return it. See, so instead of making this in every single, I can just call vertex descriptor. So generate basic, instead, it'll just be vertex descriptor and this is a static func so this needs to be private static let and that's great um, so let's copy that one put that up yeah look at how much shorter this is and easier to kind of understand so if I go here and this will be grid render pipeline state see if anyone has any questions nope no questions if you have questions feel free to reach out uh, right now we're creating the grid for anyone who might be new in the channel um, I'm creating a grid for our snake uh, so let's let's pull up what I'm building so I have my pictures I have tons of these little things let's go here so if I open this you'll see we have this grid that our snake travels along so we're gonna be generating the grid so the grid, the um, the actual lines and the background are two separate entities. So the grid is contained inside. When I say grid, I mean like these lines and the grid background is gonna be this gradient stuff. So um, we're creating a grid background render pipeline state. Yeah, let's do background. Yeah, let's do the pretty color thing. So you understand how to do the pretty color. In a th All right, so grid background. Uh, render pipeline state this will be grid fragment shader and yes let's create a new here so case grid background um and this will now be for the type grid background it's a long function name Okay, Whew. apparently you need to be a var. Why? Why? Just kind of scrolling through, making sure I'm covering all. So we have a new grid vertex fragment shader, same vertex shader, gorgeous. 
Very much so. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so in shaders.metal, we need to create another fragment shader. Uh, that is grid underscore fragment shader, grid background. Fragment shader, and let's go back to our render pipeline states and update this to be grid background. This isn't our actual grid with lines. This is grid background. Um, cool. If I were to go into grid now and just do an init function here, uh, we can say we have a mesh. What can I do? Oh, we need grid constants. That's what we need to so override init. We'll go super dot init here, and we need grid constants. So in metal types, because this is so grid constants is going to be all of the like the width, the height, the color, all that information for our grid. Um, do we need grid constants? for the background though, no. The answer is no, we don't need them for the background. The background we just need delta time because we're gonna change that gradient based on that time. So let's go ahead and just send that through our shader. So let's go to shaders.metal, inside of grid background fragment shader, I'm gonna add another buffer, which is a float, uh, maybe const float for, no, no float, reference of delta time. Actually, we'll do total total game time buffer. Let's do three. We're doing it at, nah, this is the frame shader. Okay, one. So the total game time, uh, I'm setting that to buffer one, which means that in all of our other um, fragment shaders, we'll be able to access this total game time as well, just by adding it to buffer one. Nah, put it to zero. Yeah, zero. Okay, yes, what do you want from me? Must have an explicit, oh, my bad, constant. There we go. So uh, like now we can do the cosine of total game time here and over where we're calling this grid background fragment shader, um, which is of course inside of our grid where we do the grid background, uh, we can now set in the do render, uh, we can go render command encoder dot set fragment bytes. Do you want to do auto complete for me? My stomach's growling. Method does not override anything, huh? Are you lying to me? Oh, I need I need the metal kit. That's what I need. Import metal kit. And we can go render command encoder dot uh, set fragment bytes. So this is me setting the fragment bytes for, um, we'll go var total game time. No, I think I can just send total, no, it's a getter. Okay, total game time equals game time dot total game time. Okay, since this is a getter, I don't think you can, if I go there, jump to definition. I'm pretty sure it's only a getter. Okay. Yeah, you, can, you have to pass in var. You can't pass like something that can be modified. Also, you can't just do let here. Let's can't be passed to the GPU, so you need to be a var, and this will be total game time which will be a float dot size at index zero. Um, inside of my snake scene now, if I go var grid, let's, let's do this grid background right there as a grid background. Speaking of which, this grid needs to be a grid background. Uh, we'll just call it, the, the, we'll call the class grid Oh boy, yeah, let's be grid background. Right there. This will be the grid file. I'll probably put the grid lines in there as well. So grid will contain background and lines. And in snake scene, instead of adding a game object, we're gonna add grid background. Oh. Um, 
Press play and see what happens. Should get something. Anybody have any questions? No? Anybody watching? Hello? Oh. I only have a limited amount of time because my battery's gonna die on my computer. Build snake. Well, didn't like that because this now needs to be grid background. Dot rotate Z. That's why I was freaking out. Yeah, come on. There we go. Oh, looks like it's blowing up. It's saying go to hell. Uh, missing buffer index at zero for total game time. Now, why is that the case? I'm setting it, aren't I? Over inside my grid file right here and do render. I should be hitting this line. Indeed, I'm not. And the reason is game object. calls this right here, calls super.render. It renders its children. Um, snake scene, adds grid background, do update. I know what will fix it, and it's gonna drive me nuts if I just do render here. Think this will fix it. I don't know why it's not calling do render now. Nah. It's not like Fortnite or Rocket League or Apex Legends or Skyrim. This is just a basic game. So, yeah, that looks just fine. And now you'll see that the red value is based on the cosine of the total game time. Cool, cool, cool. All right, make, making some progress. Uh, and we also have those texture coordinates. So I'm just gonna make this render. I'm gonna get rid of the do render. It's freaking out. And uh, I don't wanna like go down the rabbit hole of getting lost. So if we need to render, we'll just have to call override render. But that'll be fine. So out in our scene, render, game object, render. Where are you broken? If you ever get these errors, it's easy to just go to product, clean build folder. It'll clean it, and now it should build just fine. Uh, apparently, no. It should have built just fine. Okay. Yeah, so uh, now that succeeds. So I'm going to go and steal some code from my other one right here. Let's go to the shaders.metal. Go to where I'm doing my grid fragment shader, actually grid background. And uh, let's steal this line of code and I'll show you what it means in just a second. I don't wanna have to try to figure this out again from scratch. <laughs> Took me some time. So we have our texture coordinates right here. So we're taking the absolute value of our texture coordinate.x texture coordinate.y and then the absolute value of our sign we don't actually need this absolute value right here now we're doing the sign of total game time for our blue and let's see what this looks like uh, call to constructor float 4 is ambiguous call to constructor of float 4 is ambiguous. Color is ambiguous, huh? How dare you? How dare you? Let's see what the hell's going on here. Float for x equals that. Okay, so I'll just keep that absolute value in there. I must have added it for some reason. Oh, I see. Just put that as right there. Cool, now we have this color. And uh, if you can't see what's happening, it looks like this. I'll push this up in just a moment. But if we were to press play now, we should get some pretty cool looking 
colors as our background. So we have this nice little gradient um, that goes, you know, it looks pretty. Uh, if we were to blow that up, so if I go to snake scene, actually let's go to um, background the grid and just say self dot scale uh, set scale set scale. Um, we're gonna set it to like 3.0, so three times the size of what it currently is. It'll take up the entire screen, and then we can now now it just looks like the background. You see. Whew. That looks gorgeous, right? And it's rotating too, so it's kind of keeping that uh, the color going around the screen. So I'm gonna push this up, so you have a really cool little concept going. Um, we'll go grid background, commit to master, and push. All right. Let me know what you think of that, huh? All right, now we need to create our grid, like our grid lines. So inside the grid file, I'm gonna create a uh, class grid lines. That will be a game object. Uh, grid lines is going to need a different render pipeline state. So let's go here and um, create a new render pipeline state. So I'm gonna copy this one right here, paste it, Instead of doing grid render pipe grid background, we're going to do grid render pipeline state. This will just be a grid fragment shader, and we need to add one more case grid lines. In fact, grid lines is what we're going to call it. Generate grid lines should be more specific. Uh, grid lines here, fragment shader, and grid lines. Sweet. Now all we need to do is call it from the initializer generate grid lines render pipeline state. No questions. Apparently everyone just understands this stuff perfectly or they're not watching. Either way, thanks for uh, tuning in. Let's see here. Uh, we have our grid lines render pipeline state. Inside grid, we have grid lines. I'm just gonna copy all of this code right here in grid background and just kind of throw it in here. This will be grid lines here. We don't need to set the scale. Don't worry about that. No, which means we don't need the init. We might need the init in a little bit. I'm gonna keep that. Uh, we're gonna set the frag. We're definitely gonna set the total game time right there. So I'm gonna keep that and Yes, the only thing I need to do now is go back to my render pipeline states file and copy the name. So it's grid lines fragment shader. Inside of shaders.metal, let's just copy the grid background and call it grid lines. Okay, so as you can see, we have the color, which equals that. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different um, because of yeah should i do it and then describe it or should i okay let's go copy some code we'll copy it i have this grid function that i created that's super duper useful uh i'm just gonna put it above the grid right here grid lines Is that Drake? My neighbors are bumping. Give me some drizzy. Okay. Let's see if it builds. Probably should build. All right. So, um, cell counts. How many cells are we gonna have wide? Right. Zero, one, two, three, four, eighteen, nineteen. How many cells wide, or how many cells hi cells high? And when I say cell, let's bring back up that image. The this right here is like forty wide and forty high so that's what I'm talking about by cell count um, the line width is going to be how wide each individual line is inside here um, what's the next one texture coordinate I need the texture coordinate because what I do is uh, so from here this corner which is zero zero 
to this corner is 1, 1. So across here is going to be 0, and then the halfway is going to be 0 0.5, and then it's going to be 1, and then down here is going to be 0 0.5, and this is going to be 1. So throughout here, it goes from 0 to 1. Now what I do is I take how many cells wide, and I multiply that by what the current texture coordinate is. So say the texture coordinate is 0, and I multiply it by 40. I want 40 wide. Well, it's going to return 0. Now say we're at texture coordinate 0 0.1, and I multiply it by 40. Well, that's going to be 1 40th, 0 0.1 40th of the width. So what I can do with that is I can take this line width. This will create grid lines <laughs> using fract. Okay, I think the main thing that I need to just say in this statement is fract. Fract is modulo. So it's the remainder of whatever devising factors you're using. So 1 over 4 is going to be 0 0.25. So 25 is going to be the fract. It's the modulo. Right? Cool? Who doesn't understand that? Everybody? Can't really describe things very well. But that's okay. So now we have this grid lines function that takes in a grid color and a background color. And that's awesome. Um, so, and it's just basically color. Like what color should I color in? So I'll go color equals grid lines right here. And this is gonna need to take in some parameters. So what parameters are, do we need? We need cell counts. So let's just create float to, let's do a five by five grid. Let's do the line width of, um, let's do 0 0.1, I guess for now. Uh, the texture coordinate is going to be rd.texture coordinate. Uh, the grid color, so float four, let's go one, zero, zero, one. So a red grid. And the background color is going to be, let's just do float for 0 0.01, no, 0 0.03. Let's make it really dark. So it's going to be that, that, that. Like I said, if you have questions, now's the time. Unless you're like some sort of a future person watching this, and which you don't have that awesome capability. All right, so grid lines, if I press play now, will it work? Okay, I'm not adding it to the scene yet. So inside of snake scene, what I need to do is I need to go and add, so we have our grid background. Um, let's create our var grid lines equal grid lines. Let's add that as a child. So first things first, grid background, we want that to render first, add child grid lines and yeah now we have our grid lines being added and it's actually not going to be it's not going to fill up the screen we'll want to do that um, boom. okay cool so yeah uh, as you can see we have a grid now I got a big ass hair on my back um, with the background color that's really dark and then we have red as the lines and um, uh, if we go into our shader dot metal, we can increase this to like 50 by 50. And now we have a grid that is 50 by 50. Now, some if you, if you, I can't zoom in on it right now, but you'll notice that some of these grid lines are a little different. And I think that's just how that fract, that modulo fract function works. Uh, doesn't it's not like super consistent with like floating point values so yeah um but it it does the job it does it does it does the job uh let's go back to our our grid here and instead of adding the grid lines in our snake scene let's just add them to the grid background so uh actually no let's not add them to the grid background <laughs> totally made that up the reason i don't want to add that to the grid background is because uh, reasons. Um, let's create a new game object inside of game. And it's not going to be a game object. It's going to be a node. And it's just going to be grid. Uh, Grid.swift already exists. Oh, cool. Grid.swift already exists. <laughs> Don't need to add a new file. Let's just go to grid. We're going to create a class. It's going to be grid. And it's just going to extend node. Now node what that means is we can just add children to this and they don't actually get rendered to the screen. It's not 
it's not mandatory that they get rendered. Um, if they implemented game object, they would, but in this case, they don't. So override init will go super dot init, and we're going to go to our game scene, snake scene, take grid background, put it inside of our grid after super dot init. Oh, excuse me, uh, at the very top. And then back in snake scene, I'm going to add these when I do uh, the initializer. And then on update, we're going to rotate our background grid because that looks kind of cool. So uh, the scene will now just consist of var grid equals grid add child grid and inside grid we want to update by going like that all right so we press play now um we should have some sort of a grid being added inside of our grid file uh we'll want to scale no we won't want to scale well we're, we're gonna probably do our projection matrix next um this doesn't want to run ah there it is uh so yes all right, we have a grid. Um, let's go into our scene real quick and just go var projection matrix, I guess. Yeah, equals um, matrix. So inside of this utils math class, I have a couple orthographic matrices. One of them is wrong. Uh, the other one's right, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use perspective. So if I look at the perspective matrix, this is how it gets created. Um, and apparently I have that um, link right there where it'll tell you exactly where I learned how to do this. So we're gonna use this perspective matrix now. Uh, so I'm gonna go matrix float four by four dot perspective. Uh, the degrees will probably do 90 because we want it to be uh, like square, right? So 90 degrees. Uh, the aspect ra ratio is going to be 1.0 because we want them to be square. There's, you know, there's not really a rectangle. The near is going to be 0 0.1 and the far is going to be, let's just do 10. I guess that doesn't really matter. And if I press play, everything's going to break because there's a reason for that. I don't have a camera. There's no camera in this scene. So let me think. Let me think. Yeah, let's create a camera. So in game, I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna, it's gonna be a Swift file. I'm gonna call it camera. And I'm just gonna go steal some camera stuff from my other games. So here we have here, entities, graphics, game shiz, cameras, let's do camera right there. Copy that. Um, not gonna, it's not gonna be exactly the same so we don't need camera types or anything like that. This is just gonna be a main camera. Don't need that right there. Uh, we have our projection matrix and we don't need the camera type. And we obviously don't need this as well, which means we don't need this. <laughs> Boom, uh, which means we don't need this. Uh, this translate is not the same translate. So dot translate, what is that? Get position but the negative of it, and boom! I have a camera. Uh, the projection matrix is going to be what I did in the snake scene, or excuse me, in the scene. So we have this projection matrix right there. Um, inside the camera class, which I'm gonna put at the top. Whoa, let's put it up here. It's not really relative. All right, uh, boom, boom, yep. All right, let's make sure that builds. See, we have our view matrix and our projection matrix. Just like in our shader, we have a view matrix and projection matrix. So now inside scene, I can go var camera equals camera. And then I can say uh, on update, func update, super dot update. We can say scene constants dot view matrix equals camera dot view matrix. 
and then we can go scene constants dot projection matrix equals camera dot projection matrix. Boom. Um, this needs an override. And I'm going to push this up in just a second so you guys can see it. Let's see. Is anybody even watching? Am I talking to myself? We got three people. I'm famous. I'm going to be famous. Um, for our snake scene, our camera will need to back out a little bit. So camera dot move uh, Z. We're going to go negative, uh, well, towards your nose. So four, I guess. Let's try that. See what's up? Don't need to add the child of the camera. We just need the camera. Look at that. So I backed up the camera four spaces and that is what it looks like. Um, so this is kind of where I need to start creating a global file to keep track of these settings. So I'm gonna create a new Swift file. I'm gonna call it game settings. And this is where we're going to update all of the different things like cells wide. So uh, just go class game settings. We have a game settings class. This will have var, well, what do we have here? Uh, public static, public static var, we'll go cells wide. This will return, um, bless you. Cells wide will return a float or an int, I guess a uh, int, we need some simd up in this beast. Let's just do import metal. <laughs> Get, if I can, uh, this will be a int two return all right so what do we want int2 actually uh how did i do it in my other snake game because this became kind of frustrating at one point was how to do the cells wide so if i go to my game settings see we had this grid size which was made of floats and then i returned and i'm just gonna take this stuff boom then I don't need to type anything. So now we have a uh, grid size, which is 40 by 40 right now. Uh, grid cells wide returns grid size dot X. Grid cells high is grid size dot Y. And then we have our grid lines width, which means inside of grid, we can pass these values through. So let's go to our um, shaders metal file and add a couple things. So grid lines, what do we need? Well, we need constant float Two, this will be ant cells uh, cell count. Yep, uh, we'll put that at buffer one. So now instead of um, passing 50 by 50, we'll just do cell count, which is dynamic. Uh, we'll need the line width. So, oh, you know what? Let's just create a type. <laughs> Instead of passing a million different things and a bunch of different buffers, we can create a type. So we're gonna go struct grid constants. This will be a sizable var cell count, which will be a float two, which will equal, we'll just do one by one for now. Float two, one by one. We'll go var cell or cell width, no, line width which will be a float, which equals, let's just do 0 0.1, and whatever stuff we need in the future. So now we have a grid constants, which is a sizable. Let's go to our shaders.metal and add a struct grid constants right here, which will have the float to cell count. And we'll have the float uh, line width right there. So instead of taking in a bunch of different things, instead of doing like cell count, uh, line width, we'll just do grid constants, grid constants. And now instead of cell count right here, we can go grid constants dot cell count, grid constants dot cell width cells wide cells line width and then we could pass in some color stuff right here which we'll do in just a second um then we have that nah, yep 
Cool. That, that, that looks good so far. Uh, inside of grid now, we can pass that grid constants. Uh, let's go to grid lines, because that's where we need it. Uh, we can go override, uh, sorry, and go var grid constants equals grid constants. And we can go render command encoder that set fragment bytes the reference to grid constants length is grid constants oh. dot uh, stride and the index is going to be one I think is that what I put it at I can't remember uh yep put it at one cool um yep Let's build it Let's see what happens okay um yeah yeah cool uh instead of doing it like that though let's go to metal types and instead of doing cell count right here let's just go game settings dot cell uh game settings dot cells wide settings dot grid cells high game settings dot line width this is ridiculous let's go to game settings and grid size I'm gonna have a public static var grid size. <laughs> eh, I probably don't need to do it like this because this is kind of gross, but whatever. <laughs> you know what's up. Um, and that's just basically gonna be this float two. Right there. Let's return grid size, what am I doing? Uh, and the reason I'm doing that, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Obviously, I just don't know what I'm doing. So I'll go game settings dot grid size. Let's run it. See what happens. Probably gonna break. Now there's a reason I'm making those globally available. Ah, see, same thing. And that's because. With our projection matrix, we're gonna need to back off our camera based on how many cells wide we are. Yeah, I think. Let me just go look at my other code that I did before. Um, let's go to grid. No, uh, it's not grid, it's game scene. Scene? Yes. Um, so it looks like I did negative translate which is cells wide yeah let's just copy this code <laughs> and we'll explain it it makes sense to me how does that make sense to you all right so camera.move z so let's throw this right there and this right there All right, so based on um, the width or the height, so if the cells wide is greater than the cells high, we're gonna use cells wide, else cells high. And uh, when we're doing project.translate, this is our Z axis right there. And yeah, just make sure this works. Let's make sure this works uh, before I explain it because we just need to move our camera back, our projection matrix back. Um, okay, so it is negative. Negative translate, really? I'm trying to think why the hell I did this. Okay. I can explain. Hmm. Projection matrix equals that near negative one. Ooh. 
So I know for a fact my projection matrix in the camera is not negative. I guess this probably doesn't matter and the far is one. Oh, because I don't have depth buffering. Yeah, I don't have depth. So translating. Yep, we need some depth. Um, in order to add depth, we need to create a depth descriptor. So let uh, depth descriptor equal TL depth stencil descriptor. I haven't done this in a long time, so. Uh, and the reason I have to do it this way is because I was translating my projection matrix, but instead now I'm translating my view matrix, which might make things a little bit more complicated. You know what? Mm, yeah, yeah, we're gonna add depth because I, I, I kind of want to make it a 3D snake, right? I, I said this. So depth descriptor dot uh, min, nope, sorry, uh, dot is depth right enabled. Obviously, we want that to be true. Depth descriptor dot uh, uh, depth compare function equals dot less. And then we're gonna set render pipeline descriptor dot depth attachment pixel format equals dot depth 32. I think the stencil, I think I need to do the stencil. Render pipeline descriptor dot, oop, nope. This needs a depth stencil state now. Oh, forgot. Um, yeah, so when you're doing depth, you need to set the depth stencil state of that pass. Yep, so I need a stencil state. So we have render pipeline states. Let's create a new file. We'll call it depth stencil state. Yep, depth stencil states. It's gonna be very similar to our render pipeline states. So import metal kit class depth stencil state. Um, we will have a library, so private var library, which will consist of depth stencil state types, enum depth stencil state types, which will be case, let's just do less for now. Um, we're gonna go depth stencil state types here. This will be MTL depth stencil state. All right, and we will have a function public static, oh, public static var library. Funk, we're gonna call it get, just like before. This will take uh, type, which will be depth stencil state types, and it will return library at type. Woo, nice. Um, now we need public can't type public static funk initialize and this will fill up our library. So let's go back to the render pipeline states. Let's put these above there. We'll just create a new group called libraries and throw these in there because that's really what these are. They're just, they're kind of libraries. Um, we need this depth stencil descriptor that I just made couple seconds ago we're adding depth so it's like yes it's 2d but we're also gonna make it 3d it's like the same so in order to do 3d we need depth so we're gonna do private static funk create less depth stencil state um, and that's gonna go library dot update value uh, we'll need the depth stencil state, so I'll need to do it. Do um, var depth stencil state, MTL depth stencil state. Uh, we will do depth stencil state. How bored are you guys? Depth descriptor. Cool, and then I can just add that depth stencil state. 
for key dot less. All right, create less dead stencil state there. Uh, apparently I don't need that. And um, yeah, let's see if anybody has any questions. Nobody? I figured. Uh, let's see, Rigger. All right, this needs to return an MTL depth stencil state right there. And our depth stencil state library is completed, except now this needs to be banged. Bang it. How long, how long have I been on? Got 51% still on my battery. That's pretty cool. Uh, do I really not need to? Oh, I need to catch it. Catch. Print. Error. Depth. Stencil state. Print that error. Uh, and then put some of those. All right, cool. Now we have this depth stencil state inside of our... Really? Does this... Really? Amazing. Okay, apparently there's no try catch for the depth stencil state because uh, I have a really bad memory. So I guess I don't need to do that. Easy. Let's see here. Value of optional type. What does this one do? That's it? What you want from me? That wasn't so bad. What do you want? Let. Okay, cool. So apparently that's it. That's all I really needed to do. Now out in our game view, we need to initialize that. So depth stencil states dot initialize right there. And we have depth stencil states, which means inside of our scene, we can go uh, render command encoder dot set depth stencil state to depth stencil states dot get dot less. I'm setting it on the scene, the top level of the scene, because I don't need to do it specifically like all over the place. I don't want to do it for every single game object or anything like that. I'm just doing it at the very beginning of the render pass. Um, because it's going to be the same regardless. I'm not doing any like shadow depth testing or anything like that. It's just going to be fairly basic. So for now, we're just going to put it at the very top level um, render. And we should see something happen here. Oh, um, yeah, so the depth attachment texture, that's OK. Uh, we need to update our game view. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, self dot depth. what is it? Format equals dot uh, depth. Is it stencil eight? I I can never I can never remember if I need to do the stencil or if I need to just do depth thirty two float. And then this right here should add. Let's see. Oh great. Um. Oh, uh, that's because <laughs> one of the last things that I need to do is um where I'm creating all my render pipeline states, I need them all to have this depth since I'm doing it at the very top level. So let's go ahead and just do that. Um, pixel format, depth, and this one also needs it. Gonna push this code to GitHub soon. Do not fret. All is well. Let me make sure. Um, people are still watching. I'm not just talking to myself. All right. Yes. What is the error now? Great. More more bugs. For stencil attachment, uh, does not match the frame buffer's pixel format. For that. For the oh oh right 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 right. I think now I need render pipeline descriptor dot depth. Dot stencils. Oh, there it is. Is this what it is? I could be wrong. We need to set the stencil attachment too. Huh. 3D is tricky. I might need to go look at my engine. Um, see what I did, because it's just been so long. Oh, nice. And what I think might happen, if I go back to my snake scene, this isn't negative, this is positive. We need to translate that many We got some stuff on there. Uh, I don't know where the hell my grid went, 
But we have 3D. We're in 3D. I don't know if we need to be in 3D. This divided by 2? Let's just go 1. Let's see what happens if I move like 2 back. Let's see here. Okay, where's our grid? Our grid just kind of disappeared. Everybody else worried about our grid? Let's go into the debugger. Debugger. Right here. I could just translate that projection matrix. We needed to do this anyway. So draw index primitives. Grid background. Grid lines. Fragment bytes. Those grid constants. Is it not? Part of me wants to say that it's actually not sending these bytes over correctly. So let's go check them out. 0 0.05. Hmm. Okay, so that looks good. The depth stencil. What could I be doing differently with this depth stencil on the grid that I'm not doing? Do I need to do it for every single game object? I don't think I need to, but you know what? This is a small little bug. We're gonna get this. Let's go there. Let's go to our game object. It could be, oh yeah, because if I'm setting different render pipeline states, I think that it's not gonna be the same depth stencil state. So, huh. Let's not render the grid real quick. So let's go to grid. It's been a while since I've actually done this without like copying and pasting. So forgive me. My computer is gonna launch to the moon. It's super loud. Okay, so they're there. Um, for some reason, the grid background, if I, ooh, they are at exactly the same. Okay, so if I go grid lines dot move Z, let's do 0 0.1 or something. Maybe they're just like overlapping each other. That could be it, perhaps. No, let's go negative 0 0.1. Really, I could do like an orthograph. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so what was happening is they were overlapping each other, and uh, yeah, sweet. Um, I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm, I might be tempted to make that background. Oh, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I'm sorry, uh, because right now what, what's happening in our snake scene is this is not really. Like one divided by 40. What happens when I do f one divided by 40? Which is how many cells wide it is. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of do some plug and chug real quick just to kind of get some ideas in my head on why the projection measure is divided by that. I mean, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna take this translate function right here. I'm gonna go into my camera. Because this camera is based on, um, we're gonna go flow, uh, we're gonna go var mat equals uh, this. Then we're gonna go mat dot translate what I did here. <laughs> Just do this. Because this works, and the re there's there is a reason behind it. Um, don't know if I need to tell you. Like if it's important, it might be important. Mat dot translate. I can describe it. It won't be that bad. Uh, 
Ah, let's see here. Cool. Um, and now in our snake scene, um, why is it so small now? I had this working, promise. Definitely had it working. Um, let me think. Camera. I didn't have a view matrix, so like, what if I take these away? That won't matter because it's all. Oh, I'm scaling. Could it have to do with the scale. Okay. Okay. It's like making it super. See what this does. Matt dot translate. Bar is one. What was it over here? Yeah. Okay, we're getting a little closer. A little closer. I think this needs to be. If I translate this one divided by two, so we have 40 wide. We need to move it back. The camera can be moved back. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna plug and chug. That's what we're gonna do. So let's go to snake scene. Let's add that move back. We're just gonna plug and chug until we get a good um, number for where we want the scene. This should be this should be dynamic. That's the problem. I want to make sure I, I make it as dynamic as possible. It's possible. Shouldn't be negative. Do I have to do one? So zero point five should get it uh, about like full screen, right? Was it because I was doing an integer divided by a double and it? See, isn't that odd? It's, if I do one, is it two? No, I don't wanna move back any farther. So if I do one here, is that too much? Wow. It seems like it's not working. <laughs> oh, the depth is one. Let's make this uh, far 100. <laughs> I think that could be one of the reasons, maybe. Um, sorry guys, people, whoever's out there. Let me see if there's people out there. If you have any suggestions on uh, what it might be, you let me know. So if I do 1.1, let's go 0 0.9, let's do that. So right under 1.0. Hmm. One point zero looks just fine. Alright, so what I'm gonna do just to kind of so I'm gonna go funk update camera dot move z uh I don't have any key bindings. Game time. So I'm gonna move in the override funk update super dot update. Hmm. Yeah, so by the time it actually it's gone, it looks like one works. So if, I, if it's at one, it works just fine. Does it have to do with my view matrix? Am I setting the right thing? So is it hitting this? <laughs> Am I setting that view matrix correctly? Yeah, so it's hitting here. And inside of my um, shaders with the vertex shader, 
model matrix times so projection times view times world position okay and that depth stencil state that's it and that works just fine now in scene camera dot view matrix camera dot projection matrix and if I go to snake scene if I press play does it work I think there's something up with my um, projection matrix it's near and far is all messed up I think it's because it's negative 0 0.1 maybe I, I've, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss right now yo no say I might just go back to the way I was doing it uh, that's probably what it is because hmm Just give me some time. This is gonna take a second. This is what you don't see that I edit out in the tutorials when I'm just struggling to figure out the issue. All right, now my grid isn't showing up. Because <laughs> I think it's moving backwards. Hmm. Hmm, okay. So there's 1.0. Okay, so I think everything is kind of back on track. If I go 1.1, this shouldn't break anything. Since that depth stencil is still there. Cool. All right. So I don't, I don't know what the hell I did. If you saw it, let me know. But now, uh, camera.moveZ should now make this thing full screen. Give me that grid. I just want that grid. Very important. Oh, look at that. Um, but we don't want to actually do it 0 0.5. What we want to do is we want to do one. Let's do one divided by two, well, one half. So we can do, um, we have to do it based on the width, the translate, right? Uh, based on the wide or the, let's see. So if I go translate, that's gonna do 40. One, we're gonna translate 20 and we don't wanna do that. We wanna do one over 20, right? One divided by that times 0 0.5. Is that wrong? Will this look good? Probably not. <laughs> nope, nope. So one half gets it perfect. We have 40. I wanna do it based off the width. So how many cells wide? So what I need to do is I need to make it so 0 0.5 Hmm. Hmm. Let's just do that for now. Actually, we're going to do 0 0.6. Nope, 5.5. Five. All right, we're almost there. Um, we'll we'll want to make it so it's dynamic for the translate, rotate. Well, actually, now that I think about it, um, You better be working. Don't be broken. This will look good. Yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be that size regardless, which is good. We don't actually need to take into consideration the translation. I thought we did, but we don't. That's odd, right? You get, I don't know if you guys see what's going on here, but when I do like a... Uh, like 0 0.6 doesn't 
do anything. 0 0.7 does. 0 0.65 doesn't do anything, or should it? Yep, okay. So move back 0 0.65, we'll do 68. I guess this is based on the border width. We can probably put in some logic for this. Um, I'm just trying to create that border. Yes, okay, 68, move back too far, 64. All right, if you're having a good time, uh, go ahead and hit like. <laughs> if you're not watching me debug for five hours, small things. Is that, is that good? 6-3? Six, 6-2? Six, I don't want it to be too obvious. That there's a border, like a super strong border, but okay that is gorgeous let's go in and make one more quick adjustment and um i'm not going to rotate the background anymore so we're doing this rotate z for the background um let's go into the shader i'm about to push all this up in like t minus 15 seconds so where i'm doing the color right here i'm going to take that we have total game time, awesome. So the grid lines color, that's where that's gonna be. And yeah, so we'll do this as the grid lines color. And this should look pretty cool. We should have like somewhat of a techno themed grid going on. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we necessarily need to have for the grid, we don't need to have, we just do the sign of, I guess, one. <laughs> sign, it, oh, it doesn't like that. Uh, total game time, we can go 1.0. Uh, that way it doesn't actually change. We can do that. We could also darken the um, the background just a little bit. So hell, if I do 1.0 here, let's see how it looks without doing that gradient that like changes. I mean, that looks pretty gosh darn good. It doesn't hurt your eyes. My eyes aren't hurting. Are your eyes hurting? You know what? I think we can revisit it if we really need to, but that looks pretty good. Um, that's where we will keep it. Let's see. Let's see what my my other game looks like. So if I go here, look how dark that is. There's there's one of the problems. So right here, I'm doing 0 0.03. Let's just do. What am I doing here for this shader? I'm making it. That's the background color. That's the background color I want to use. That's a lot darker. So that's 0 0.02. It was 0 0.03. Let's see, darken it a little bit. And then, see the brightness of this? It looks a little different. Did I multiply it by something? Try to get it the same. Times, yep. So I had this color and I multiplied it to make it a little bit darker. So that's what I'll do. Is that for? the color this is the lines so the lines are going to be a little bit darker than um the actual game like the the background see and wherever we put an apple we can light those up a little bit more i think that looks good i think that looks great something kind of nifty I'll show you in just a moment yeah see now we can change that background and have stuff going it doesn't hurt your eyes too much uh, one kind of a cool thing inside the snake scene we can go uh, grid dot rotate rotate on the y-axis game time dot delta time so if we rotate on the y-axis I think everything inside the grid should rotate because we have that parent model matrix so 
Uh, nope, saying go to hell. That's what it's doing. Uh, grid, oh, duh. We need to put it inside of our update function. So I have been on here for like a couple hours, I think, going. Um, if you want me to go a little farther, I can. Look at that, that's cool. Let's, yeah, that is cool. Let's not do the grid. Let's just uh, rotate the lines. So let's keep the grid. Let's just go here and go grid lines. Dot rotate based on the game time. If you want me to keep going, I can. Uh, let me see. Ah, back at it again. Did you post it on Discord? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. Uh, we spot is es da Drubin. Probably didn't say that right. Uh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, so what I can do is let's just make this a little bit more. Uh, no, I should post it on Discord though. I'll go post it right now. That I already done it. <laughs> That's kind of pointless. Might get off. If anybody, if you guys want to keep me, uh, want me to keep going, I can. I can keep. I can add some snakes. Uh, like a snake head on there. Um, I'm thinking about taking a break. I've been on it for, I don't, I don't know how to like check how long this has been recording. Let me go to this OBS thing. Maybe that'll say. Says that I've been live for about two hours now. Okay, fine. Let's add a snake. Actually, let's do some input. Let's do some, uh, let's, let's add this input. Cause not having key input is kind of like, you might be able to figure it out, but we, we definitely need that key input. Um, I'm going to move this grid background back grid background dot move z we're going to go negative two and then the grid background is going to scale to like five sweet i know i said i was getting off but this is kind of fun i lied i'll go for another however long uh, this needs to scale to 10. Let's do 10. Doesn't matter. It's only the fragments that land on the screen that get rendered, which is basically the whole thing. I could do a cube map. I haven't done that in my tutorial series yet. Ooh, okay. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I can rotate my grid on the scene. This is actually useful if you ever wanted to... Um, if you ever want to go and uh i'm just i'm sorry i'm looking at how it's cutting that off that's driving me nuts if you ever want to um i don't even know what i was saying let's add some freaking snakes on here uh we're not going to rotate around the y-axis let's go into our snake scene let's actually go into our game new file i'm gonna call it snake uh and i'll put it on there and then what i'll do is i'll do a little bit of uh input so that we can move our snake around and then that's it. So import metal kit class snake. <laughs> oh shit, really? Okay, good to know. It's probably because of my settings in OBS and because I have four gigs of RAM. But um, yeah, let's create the snake. So the snake will be a game object uh, we need the init. It's gonna have basically the same exact stuff as uh, the grid, except maybe in the future we'll add some texture on this. But uh, yeah, so we have init, um, super dot init, and yeah, we're gonna need the scale. Um, as a matter of fact, I need to just check to see if this works. So if we do ten by forty now. What does that look like? Oh yeah, it should. This should definitely work. Except, it won't shrink it down by that aspect ratio. I think. What I need to do is make the aspect ratio based off the grid size. Yeah. So now we need this aspect ratio inside of camera. Uh, right here. So this aspect ratio needs to be 
game settings um, dot uh, wide divided by high. And that should do it. I'm doing this a little different than my snake game. Um, I did that one a little bit uh, more hacky. Oh, okay. I did it wrong way. Wrong height. Wide. So now it's based off of that aspect ratio of our... Will this work? Should work. Should look pretty good. Look at that. Obviously, um, you know, it needs a little bit of work, but we do, we can set the grid size to anything that we want. Uh, so if you wanted to make like a mobile game with this, you could. I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's go game settings. Let's go 40 by 40 again. Actually, let's just do 10 by 10. That makes much more sense. I'm going to push this up. So we have, we have a grid. Commit to master. Push it. And voila. Let's see what I have running. Give me my eye term. Let's close that. Let's see what else I have running. Chrome. No, don't work with that. All right. Uh, okay. So where was I? Adding the snake. Let's add a snake. So inside of my snake scene, we have a grid. Now let's go var snake equals snake. Uh, I'm adding the grid. Now let's add the child snake. I could add the snake as a child of the grid, but I don't want to do that. I just don't, I'm not in the mood for it. Um, yeah, snake should just basically be a mesh on there. I need to move it out, so I need to go self.move or set position Z to whatever our grid lines is. That's the only thing that I think I messed up a little bit with it. I don't need this init function. Um, and we don't need, so we've moved our grid lines to 0 0.1, which means that our snake needs to be at 0 0.1. So, sweet. Yeah, I did mine in 2D development, not 3D. So that's why this is a little different than, um, um, where's our snake? We should have added a snake. Let's uh let's add them to zero point one zero one. Might need to add him as a child. Render him first. There's our snake. <laughs> so he's huge. Uh, we need to go self dot set scale to uh, what's our scale? I mean, one divided by. In this case, it's ten. So I think one tenth. Yep. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. So now we have uh, that. If we go into our game settings and go eleven by eleven, make it odd, and then press play, he he should fit right inside of a square without any further manipulation. So let's see if he does that. Look at that. See, so now he is a little square. Um, let's scale him down by the grid line width. So that's 0 0.05. So I need to go um, uh, snake set scale. So this will be, well, I'm trying to think. We'll want him to maintain his aspect ratio. We'll just do game settings dot cells high for now. Yeah. And then we're also going to multiply this times one minus game settings dot uh, line width. Uh, give me some auto completion, please. Oh, grid line width. I'll just type it. So now it should fall right in. Oh, 
My auto completion is taking forever, of course. There we go. So now he should fit right inside of that. Oh, I did one minus. I don't know if that's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Look at that. Ha ha. Um, let's add some key input. So if I just go over to my, um, yeah, let's just go grab it. I'm going to push it up. So if you need key input, you'll have it. Basically, it's going to be these right here. So I'm going to show those in Finder, and I'm just going to copy them over into my, um, so I'll need this. Let's go new group, call it input. If you have any questions, just ask some questions. But I'm going to just try to make this game. That's the idea. So I'm going to copy these, copy them if needed, please. Now we have keyboard, and then also inside of my game view, I need to go and um, add all of this code. <laughs> Basically, this code's job is to do the events for the firing of key input. And then I think I should have key input. Build, make sure it all works. Ooh, and then I need my screen size. So game view has this aspect ratio and screen size. I like that. I might just add that. Uh, And I don't need these anymore. Not right there, at least. Boom! There's that aspect ratio. Where am I doing that? Is it my snake? Is it my grid? It's my grid. Where I'm doing that uh, aspect ratio thing? Doing it somewhere. Um, but yeah, now if I build, it should be good. And if I go to snake, if I go if uh or no no update actually it's do update uh if keyboard dot is key pressed dot let's just do arrows so left arrow we should move them to the left so self dot move uh on the x-axis negative one point zero we'll move them an entire one over actually that's probably bad let's just do game time negative game time dot delta time. game time dot delta time and hopefully this works let's see oh look at him go all right we have a snake then i'm just gonna add four more of these for the snake dot right arrow up arrow down arrow we want to move x positive move y positive move y negative all right so now we should be moving our uh snake problem is he can move anywhere he wants he doesn't just move um whoop. okay so our snake can move around in whatever speed he wishes. Pretty cool. All right, um, let's push this up. We got a little notification here. I'm gonna push up this code so you guys can get it. Key input, commit to master, push origin. Yeah, now of course snake isn't just one square. It's made up of a bunch of different squares, kind of lying side by side. Uh, and so when I record again, I'm probably going to go over how to build out the snake. Or maybe I'll do the movement. I don't know. Either way, I have to use the restroom. I've been on here for like two hours. I got to take a break. I'm going to I'm gonna go nuts if I don't take a break. I need to play some video games. I need to... Yeah, just need to take a break. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me see if there's any comments in here. There are not. Um... Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any questions, I have my Discord channel. 
Uh, you can go in there, pop in there, and ask some more questions about this. Or uh, if you want to try to attempt to keep making Snake with the current solution that I have, do that. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And then I'm going to end stream. Goodbye.